Hello lovely, in this video we're gonna give you modal answers and vocabulary about collecting things. I'm Maria. And my name is Rory, and we're here to help prepare you for IELTS speaking and have a little bit of fun along the way. Rory, shall we start with a joke? What do you reckon? Do I have a choice? I feel so sorry for comic book collectors. They have so many issues. Let's talk about collecting. Do you collect anything? Well, I suppose you could say I collect tattoos since I have a lot. Um, but more concretely, I've got this... Um, actually, I've got them with me. I've got this collection of uh, plastic bands that I've picked up over the years. They come in quite handy as teaching aid. Um, and also, they're nice reminders of the places I've been to over the years. So, dear listener, we are talking about collecting things, not accumulating stuff. If you have a flat full of shoes or jewelry, for example, you are not collecting, you are just hoarding, okay? So, like, too many shoes, too many jewelry items, this is hoarding, and you are a hoarder. This is not good, okay? But collecting is a purposeful activity, Dallas. okay? And the serious collector is knowledgeable about their chosen items, items of like things. So they organize them and they have a catalog of stuff, okay? So uh, people usually collect what, Rory? Well, I think the common one that people talk about in my country is people collecting stamps. Um, but I, I'm not sure how common it is anymore. Um, probably, for the young people, do they not collect Pokemon cards? Is that still a thing? Um, or some kind of card game-based materials? Yeah, well, you can be an art collector. But also, what about taxis, Rory? Like, I'm a tax collector. <laughs> <laughs> I collect taxes. Taxes. You know, we pay taxes. Yes, we do. We follow the law. So a tax collector, all right? So or like a money collector, like people who collect money. Like you owe them money, you have to pay them back, so they like collect money. Uh, they are also called collectors. Well, they're actually, you mentioned money collectors, but um, there, there are people that collect different kinds of currency. We um, looked at our different currency collections last week, actually. So, do listen to collecting could be a hobby. Rory collects tattoos. So he has a lot of tattoos all over his body. Rory, do you have any, any tattoos on your face? <laughs> no, I don't have tattoos on my face because... No. Uh, first of all, I think that would be quite painful. Um, at least if my ribcage... Get it, I had my ribcage tattooed and that was very painful. So I can only imagine what it would be like getting my face tattooed. Also, it would affect my employment prospects. So I'm not doing that. I have a collection of books. I have a collection of tattoos on my body. Okay. I have a collection of bands. Bands or bracelets, you know, like a plastic um, like stuff here. And Rory has a collection of uh, plastic bracelets or bands. They are reminders, okay? So these bracelets remind Rory of places he has been to. So you can say, okay, I have a collection of postcards. They are reminders of places I've visited. Press above. And you were talking about the bracelets. Here they are again, by the way. Obviously, in the real exam, you will not have bracelets. You cannot bring props with you. However, if you are wearing jewelry, Maria, can you point to it? Like if I had my band on? Yes. For example, here I have my diamonds. Okay, I have my gold. I also have bracelets that are made from beads. So you could actually use those in the exam as reminders of what to say if you're asked about the topic. Um, you couldn't bring books with you because that would be cheating. However, I would like to show off my collection of EM Banks books, which I absolutely love. Um, I love the series. So, dear listener, for the purposes of the IELTS exam, go to the exam in your best clothes, wearing your best jewelry, your best makeup, okay? Your best hair. So, kind of like, look your best. Yeah, but that's cool. That's using the environment to um, help you remember. People do that in real life. If you don't have any tattoos, you still can say, like, I collect tattoos. Let me show you. you know? Freak out the examiner. <laughs> and the examiner goes, no, 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 thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't do this. 
is the IELTS test. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Why do people like collecting things? Well, I guess it depends on what they're collecting. I mean, well, blue chip art has serious monetary value. Um, and some people just randomly hoover things up um, mindlessly. So there's not really any raison d'etre there. Um, and some items are sold as collectibles on the subject of raison d'etre. So that's like the reason, the whole reason that they're there is for people to collect them. Um, and then some people collect things from their childhood. Well, it's a nice, because it's a nice reminder of um, that time in their life. So lots of different reasons. People can collect blue chip art. And people that have listened to our part three premium episodes will know what this is because I already talked about it. Now here I am in the free part one talking about it too. So blue chip art in, in a nutshell has a very serious reputation and history behind it. And so it's got lots and lots of monetary value. That means it's worth a lot of money. And do we use an article like these items have a monetary value or just monetary value without any article? It depends if we're describing it in particular, like this piece of art has a high monetary value. So we're talking about it in more detail. But just to talk in general, I don't think we need it. It's got monetary value. Art costs money. So art or like paintings have monetary value. Money. Also, certain items, we call them items or things, have sentimental value. Okay? So like things from my childhood have sentimental value. You said that people can hoover things But if you're hoovering things up, it's just like you're collecting in a very sort of wide and indiscriminatory way, which means you're not really making lots of um, thoughtful decisions about what you're collecting. You can hoover up items for to collect them, and you can hoover up food um, off your plate. Anyone who has seen me eating McDonald's knows exactly what I'm talking about. So could you give us an example? What else we can hoover up? Well, let's say there's lots of things on sale and you buy all of them, then you've just hoovered them up. You just collected all of them. Things or items people collect can be called collectibles. Okay? You collect things, you have a collection of something, so you have a lot of collectibles. Uh, to be honest, you're asking the wrong person because I don't collect that much. Um, <laughs> so, there are items that are marketed as collectibles, I think. Um, for example, th there are models, like series of models, which are marketed as things that you collect and you build up the series of models over time. Uh, so aircraft models, for example, can be considered collectible. Certain editions of books can be collectible if they have a common theme. You can also have some sentimental collections, like a collection of old family photos, uh, greeting cards, some flower petals. You have a flower and a flower has petals. Okay, petals. Like gift wrappings, for example, wrappings, like you have a gift, a present, and you wrap it. So maybe you collect these ones, seashells, okay? Rory, and then you've used this strange word. Uh, raison d'être. Oh, it's French. Um, although I probably mispronounced it, so sorry for anyone in France that's listening to us. I'm pretty sure it's it's probably the pronunciation is closer to raison d'etre, but it's um it's an English exam, not a French one. So my French pronunciation is not on trial here. But the idea of raison d'etre is just um, reason for existing. So you could say the raison d'etre for um, collectible items is just to be collected. Her job is her raison d'etre. I hope not. That's a sad life. And Rory, you told us that uh, what. Some items are considered collectibles, so that's their raison d'etre. So, well, like the books I just showed you there, um, if they're considered as collectibles, then people just buy them just because. Um, and just because they are collectibles. And also you can say that people collect things for pure enjoyment, okay? To connect with the past, all right? And to learn about something new, because a true collector, like, knows um, everything about the items they collect. Also, people think about collecting as an investment. So they want to invest their money into different collectibles. So like it's their investment. That's another reason. And they can buy vintage items. Deal is like rare, like rare, not found everywhere, rare vintage items. Is collecting a popular hobby in your country? 
I have absolutely no idea. Um, my, I mean, I need to think about it. Um, yeah, my friends collect uh, various bits and pieces of memorabilia, which are themed after various pop stars. But about people in general, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen anything on the news or any articles about it, so I don't have a clue. A very good strategy to answer the examiner's question is to say, I have absolutely no idea. Roy, how do we say it with feeling, with intonation? Well, and in any way you like. However, in my case, I was like, I have absolutely no idea. Emphasis on no, um, because I don't, I don't have any idea. I don't go around asking people about their collections. I talk to them about other things um, that are not connected to that. I suppose that's my problem, really, but I don't think it's worth talking. <laughs> Collect things, collect bits and pieces. So bits and pieces, like is a synonym for like things. And then we have this word memorabilia. So what's memorabilia? Memorabilia are just things that people collect because they're connected with a particular, well, it could be a person or it could be a place. So for example, I have a friend who's got lots of Kylie Minogue memorabilia. I've got a lot of Beatles memorabilia. <laughs> Beatles mugs, a Beatles bag. Oh, t-shirts. Okay, everything is Beatles. The Beatles, you know? I do know the Beatles, but do you really do that? Yes. I still have a lot of memorabilia. I've been to Liverpool several times and I just had to buy everything there. I have a story about that that you're going to love and hate at the same time. My grandfather was a painter and decorator and had this whole stock of Beatles wallpaper delivered in the 1960s. Um, and of course, like uh, they covered the house in it um, and then they wallpapered over it and it was destroyed. If they'd kept that wallpaper, it would be worth millions of pounds. And, and of course, it's all gone now because it, was a, uh, it, it wasn't considered collectible at the time, but you could sell this to Beatles fans for so much money. You see, dear listener, that could have been an investment, okay? So you can say that I've got a small collection of personal memorabilia personal memorabilia, like uh, things that have emotional value, emotional meaning for me, they have sentimental value, okay? Like all music memorabilia, such as posters, photographs, okay, Beatles mugs, all right, maybe you have Rory memorabilia. No? You don't have Rory on your t-shirt? No? Okay, good. Good for you. Because you have a fashion sense, good for you. What kind of items do people collect in your country? Um, people used to collect things like china and stamps, but that's a bit stereotypical and cliche, and I have no idea how widespread this is. It's just something that you see or read about people doing in the media. Another strategy when you don't know the answer is how on earth should I know? Okay, so you have nothing to say and you say like, how on earth should I know? So it's a rhetorical question, all right? Rory, how should we pronounce it uh, beautifully? Well, how on earth should I know? So emphasis, I suppose, on the earth and I and the end of the no. How on earth should I know? Like, what do people collect? Like, I don't know. So how on earth should I know? You know, and then you say something, okay? Mm, here, what items do people usually collect? You can say, um, well, Rory told us about China. China collections, you know, like China, like different uh, plates and cups and... Uh, Spoons. But, uh, you have China cutlery, um, China bowls. I don't know much about China. The, the, I know much about the country China, but I don't know much about the, the, the plates and stuff. But if you say people used to collect China, it means like plates, cups uh, made of um, special material. I think it just describes the material that it's made of. Different people collect all crazy things like celebrity hair, shells. Well, shells kind of like usual items here yeah, to collect. Semi-precious stones, for example, a diamond, okay? Here. A diamond's not a semi-precious stone. Diamonds are like... Oh, it's a precious stone. <laughs> yeah, a diamond's like an absolutely precious stone. Yeah, but what would be like a semi-precious stone? But I'm looking at the, the list here, like topaz, peridot, aquamarine. All of these things I don't know the meaning of. This is just the names of the semi-precious stones. Look them up in your own time. Also, Rory, you know, I, I've checked Scotland and... 
Uh, many people in Scotland collect s- shells, shells because like, like you have um, what the ocean, the sea. So people collect shells, and you know what do you call an activity when people walk along the shore and they kind of like they they look for. It's not beach combing, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh my! How did I? No, I should say I, Maria did not tell me that's what it was going to be beforehand, and I've only ever seen beachcombing talked about in novels for children from the 1960s. So how that, how I knew that piece of vocabulary, I don't know. But yes, I know about beachcombing. It's a crazy word. So beachcombing, comb is like when when you do this um, with your hair, right? So you comb your hair, like yeah. And when you uh, you do you do beach combing? You well you do or you go beach combing? I don't know because I haven't done it. You go beach combing, you know, like you walk along the shore and you look for beautiful shells, beautiful stones, maybe some something else, you know, maybe somebody lost some something. So kind of like um, a beach combing might be popular in different countries. Like uh, an interesting word to use, dear listener. Like um. What activities do people prefer? Beach combing. Are there any things you have kept from your childhood? Oh, loads. Uh, we have a ton of old school reports and things that we made in class, like just little ceramic bowls, for example. Um, and what else? I think those are the main things. Um, and, well, the, the reason why, like I said, it's just a reminder of... Um, how things have changed since I was younger. Or in the case of my school reports, how they haven't changed. You can collect things from your childhood, right? And maybe you have um, loads of photos or you have like a ton of old photos, like a lot of old photos. Uh, Yeah, you can also like uh, say a a pile of things, okay? A pile of um, things from childhood, loads of things or uh, a ton of, of old photos, for example. And um, you have these old photos, and it's nice to look back on things, okay? So I look back on how things were in the past and compare them to the present. Could you give us an example with this nice phrase of verb to look back on something? No, we're talking about childhood. Like, when I look back on my childhood, it was a largely positive experience. So here's an interesting fact for you, dear listener, about uh, strange collectors. David from England has um, over 500 traffic cones. So he uh, collected or collects traffic cones. Rory, what's a traffic cone? A traffic cone is uh, usually an orange cone, an orange plastic cone that is placed in the road when there's a hazard. Um, Entertainingly, there's a tradition in Glasgow in Scotland to put one of these on top of the statue of a very famous um, figure from history in our town. Well, in that town. Um, But why would you collect them? I don't understand. And also, is that not dangerous and stealing if you're collecting them from public places? You see, dear listener, so people collect uh, weird, strange things like traffic cones. You see, uh, flower petals, traffic cones, seashells. So here's your beautiful vocabulary. Let us know what would you collect. Okay, so if you had money and time, what would you collect? Could you let us know in the chat, in the comments below? Maybe some like uh, strange things, okay? Oh, I would collect, I don't know, like uh, pinky uh, bags. <laughs> I would collect, I don't know, Rory's hair. Why would you collect my hair? I don't know, you're a celebrity, aren't you, Rory? No, 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 no. You're not collecting my hair. I like my hair. And also, I'm not a celebrity. That's possibly the more important thing to focus on right now. However, share what you would like to collect. (laughs) Oh my God, I'm going to have nightmares now. Thank you for listening. Do check out our premium episodes where we discuss speaking part two and three with fresh IELTS speaking topics. The links are there. Bye. Bye. Mwah.